Yeah, especially since Dan Miller, I think, has dropped off, although he's never replied to. He could be in New Zealand. Oh, is that where he goes? Oh, yeah, every year. Nice. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner, you may proceed. One case of COVID. Yeah, Commissioner, you may proceed. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, We're going to call the meeting to order and um, let the record show that our members are present. except for Dan Miller and Bruce Kaufman this morning. Um, Also, we're joined by Chief Banks uh, and um, the public. We have Gary Glass and Walter Brittingham. Um, The first order of business I'd like to do is go ahead and approve the minutes. Uh, We haven't done that, but as you all know, I know you've all read them because I've asked you for any updates. So um, my we would look at um, minutes for a meeting held February 7th, January 7th, and January 21st. So I entertain a motion to approve those minutes. But did you want corrections? Excuse me? Do you want corrections? Well, I had sent an email back when they were a draft asking for corrections, but sure, we can take them now. Well, I figured David would pick it up. It's the one about the State Road Silent Placement? Yes. Did you get that, David? I'm I'm pulling it up now. It says it causes issues from when turning from State Road. It's it's from when you're turning the other way. Um, It It causes issues on State Road heading south, and it causes issues on Canal Street, if you're heading east, yes, Th- those two, those two streets, those two directions. Okay. Well, we certainly can have the minutes corrected with that information. So, with that correction, can I get a motion to approve? I move to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One opposed. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll ma- I'll make that correction and, and send it out to you. Um, so I was going to actually, since we can take items out of order today, I was going to start with um, talking a little bit about the possibilities of an intra-city demand shuttle. And, and I feel really bad because Lydia Hastings, is she joined the last two meetings and now she's not here. Um, <laughs> I don't know if she plans on uh, coming later, but I'm, I will contact her um, at some point and to, you know invite her to the next meeting. This is um, just a really the in, the idea of this right at the moment is just to get everybody's feelings about whether you think an on-demand shuttle is is something we ought to explore. Um, mm. As you know, I sent you all from the very beginning some time ago um, information on Ride Freebie. I've also been contacted by a company called VIA. VIA is a a company that is actually implements things like this worldwide. And in fact, they've got something going on in Georgetown right now. And they're working with Dart and and Dot. So um, that's something that potentially we can explore as well as what they have to offer. But I guess the question is, is what do you think about, you know, we've talked with um, Jolly Charlie in the past from the commissioner's half. She, they've made presentations and that was a fixed route type of, of shuttle that would be in our downtown area. And then the uh, idea for the on-demand came about because I had some experience with it in another city. And so I thought it was really interesting. So I'd like to hear each one of your um, ideas and thoughts about on-demand versus a uh, local fixed route um, or something else. Just um, we've been talking about, or the city's been talking about a jitney service um for years like for 20 years <laughs> so i just would be interested to hear what everyone thinks so whoever wants to go first please feel free 
I'll go ahead. I feel like the Dell dot and Dart link is important long term to making something really worthwhile for both the visitors and the merchants in the city. We've got two shuttle lots, if you will, that are available to us, one up at Five Points and one behind the, the Bed Bath and Beyond, et cetera, that are underutilized that would do a really good job of, of having a place for people to park. I continually think about cities that you, you just don't drive in. You take your car, you park it, and you take public transportation. And Rehoboth is the exact opposite of that right now. Certainly the Jitney service makes a lot of sense, but the pushback from the citizens, at least the vocal citizens, was pretty strong. Not on my street, not stopping in front of my house, et cetera. And yet, long term, it would be a tremendous advantage. Part of the pushback, I think, related to the statements that there were going to be speakers and tourist activity and information, which would just make it more intrusive, which I wasn't in, fa in favor of. The, the on-demand one is great. Ultimately, we've got to do something. We have free parking available to people that ride their bicycles, but everyone else doesn't really have an efficient way to move around because we're so car focused. And so we demand more parking, yet it's a fixed square mile, it's a fixed number of spaces. It's highly unlikely that anyone will ever really want to invest in a parking garage. There, there are streets that could be re-striped to gain more access. And I ultimately fall back on we are a city. It is an urban area. And it's been an urban area for over 100 years. And parking has been a problem here since the automobiles first appeared. And it's never going to go away unless we try to do something about it. Oh. Thank you. I, mean, I, I agree those are all very good issues that you bring up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have similar, some similar thoughts as what David was expressing. I'm very concerned that the Dell Dot shuttles aren't fully utilized. Like here they are, they are just out of town, they could be so helpful. And it's hard to justify doing any other public service if those aren't utilized. And so I, I feel uh, we, there needs to be a good advertising campaign to encourage people to use those shuttles. Uh, at, for parking and to get people into town and and uh, do it conveniently. Um, I'm kind of, you know, I, I supported like the fixed shuttle last year and I was surprised that people didn't want it, didn't say they'd use it. So I, I just feel we have to go with, to, with the public that uh, it will, if they don't want it, it won't be utilized. Um, and with the... Um, freebie service uh i just i just think the price takes too high i i don't know why the city would invest two hundred fifty thousand when we've got other public services not utilized also i don't see how we would subsidize uh, the residents of rehoboth are wealthy enough they don't need to have their transportation subsidized people who are coming here for an expensive vacation it's not like they don't have the assets to pay for their transportation. So, um, and I think it's duplicating Uber. I, I think if we wanna do something now, David, and I, uh, I think what it is is facilitating what's already out there, such as Uber, which is on demand. People use that all around the world and uh, it's not expensive. Uh, so I would rather figure out a way to facilitate people using Uber. And I called a friend who um, happens to drive for both Uber and Lyft. And he's been doing it a couple years. And, and of course, this past year, there was no demand for it because of COVID. But, um, and what his pattern is, is that he, he feels there's, a, there's plenty of Uber drivers and Lyft drivers and that drivers from uh, uh, New Jersey and all around will come into Rehoboth if they, when they think they can get rides. And this local person, he focuses on um, kind of the late night crowd, bar crowd that need, a, uh, who are too drunk to drive and need a lift home. So he'll wait by the purple parrot, you know, around 10 o'clock at night and get a call there, or he'll uh, expect to get a calls from the starboard in Dewey, 
you know, the bars in Dewey to drive people home. And I said, well, what do you do between rides? And he says, well, he'll, he and others, I guess, hang out at the Royal Farms and the Wawa on Route 1. So they're, you know, that's where they go between rides to hang out till they get a ride. And um, I mentioned that, well, one thing he did think, I, you know, I sort of thought like it would be helpful in facilitating Uber would be if we created a, a uh, parking spaces for them, uh, waiting spaces where they could be in town and be waiting between rides and they wouldn't have to fight the traffic to get into Rehoboth, but they could be here. And he said, yes, he said, if the city could provide some waiting areas in town, that would be really helpful to them. And so we might look for a few parking spaces like that. Like it'd be nice if there were a taxi stand in town or an Uber stand or uh, people would know that it's readily available. The other thing, I, two other points he gave, you know, when I was picking his brain was like most of the rides in town, like I sort of thought, okay, people from North Shore or Canal Corcoran or the uh, Rehoboth Beach and Yacht Club, like they might want to use a, a, an Uber to avoid bringing their cars into town. Um, and those are very, uh, you know, some of those are just the minimum ride, which would only be five to seven dollars. That's all people would have to pay for a lift from like North Shores to Rehoboth is somewhere in that range. Maybe the Rehoboth Beach and Yacht Club might be ten dollars. So it's not expensive for people to use those services. But he feels what's going to happen is, and this might be the long term solution, is he thinks Uber and the, those kind of car services they're still losing money by paying their drivers that they're going that he thinks they're going to move to autonomous cars that they're just waiting till autonomous autonomous cars are okayed and they'll put a fleet of autonomous cars on and i think that may be the overall solution if you've got those private companies doing that and um that that may work out and people might use those um so those, and um, oh, I have one, there was one other point that ran through my mind that I can't think of right now. But I guess I'm just, I just don't, I just think freebie and those, fix, those you know, demand things, they're just duplicating Uber and Lyft. And there's no need to do that. Like, uh, cause those people are already out there and people are familiar with them. And uh, I just wouldn't see doing it. Okay. So, and and I think, and I, the fixed shuttle doesn't seem to be working either. I think the main thing is really advertising and making max, maximum use of the um, uh, the, the current public uh, Del Dot shuttles. And the yeah. other thought is, it felt like we were going to go with something like freebie and have these on-demand uh, free rides. We'd have to have parking for them. They'd have to be someplace. So. Let's just find that parking, whatever we were thinking of using for them. Let's just make that available to some Uber and Lyft drivers and, and experiment with that for a season or two and see if that encourages, um, you know, if that works out. Well, I tend to agree with a lot that uh, Donna said. I, when I, uh, I did view that uh, commissioner's clip that you sent us, Pat, and um, <clears throat> uh, it seemed to me that what we were going to encourage was more traffic uptown by having these free uh, taxis. And then they talked about taking people to the beach, and I couldn't see how they could take everybody in Rehoboth to the beach. They might take one person to the beach, but <laughs> it would be hard for them to get around and do that. I like Donna's idea about advertising. <clears throat> I think the city could do it. <laughs> do some advertising about the um, the shuttle that we already have with Del Dot, Del Dart, uh, <clears throat> because I think that is underused and it and it's, it's it's so convenient. We let them park right up there, stop right up there at the beach. So I like encouraging that. I was kind of excited about the uh, shuttle, the. Uh, What's it called? The fixed trolley trolley. trolley. The, tit the titney. Yeah. When they were coming to see us, and I thought that was kind of exciting. 
but somehow we never could agree on what the route would be for that. Um, but the, the, but the, that shuttle is so easy to see. I mean, it's it's big and it's easy to see. It's not another little car taking its way uptown. That's just what I was thinking. Oh, I have two other thoughts I wanted to throw in. I think yeah, are important. Let Susan uh, contribute. Oh yeah, yeah. Susan, Sorry. Back to you. I agree with a lot of what's what's been said. And the, the bottom line for me was first of all the word intra city, uh, whether it's the Jolly Trolley, which I think is has has done really well as a great service, especially between like Dewey and and Rehoboth, for two reasons. One, it's a distance that people aren't going to walk, and secondly. Um, you, you know, it, it allows people to, to drink and not have to worry about driving home. So it's, it's a great service that, that, that they offer. And I agree, right. if the route were, were um, if it were a different route and it didn't go down a lot of residential streets with speakers, maybe people would have felt differently about it. But overall, the problem for me was the intra-city aspect. Um, because what we really need is inter-city. In other words, it's bringing people in from other places because otherwise you're just moving cars around the city and and I go back to and I know the Jitney service has been in the CDP and I don't have uh, the the line I did at one point uh, pull out some quotes I don't have that in front of me today but of course one of the most famous lines in the CDP is that the city will tolerate more people but it won't tolerate more cars so by having the you know the the freebie cars in that that's actually more cars um, and it doesn't prevent any from coming in because you have to drive into town in order to get the freebie. So if there was a way that it could service, you know, Canal, Corcoran and Gr the Grand and all those places where there are thousands of people, both visitors and residents, who want to get into town but are a little too far to walk. Um, so the same concept is, is what the Jolly Trolley does. Then I think it would be useful, but I, I, it's a matter of who pays. And I don't know that the city taxpayers should be you know, funding uh, rides for, for people out of town either. But overall, I mean, it's it's good thing that Uber and Lyft are around. I, I'll be honest, I have not taken them, but I have seen them in action. In fact, one rainy night uh, leaving a restaurant, uh, people were lined up and the cars were coming constantly. And I could tell that those were, were Uber and Lyft cars coming to pick up people. So mm -hmm. if it's a matter of promoting both the DART service as well as the private services, maybe people would that they're there, I don't know, um, that we may find that that service exists within the city. And, and, and I don't, beyond that, I'm not sure what we can do or who pays for it. Okay. Uh, Donna, go ahead and make your couple points and I'm going to make Yeah. Oh, the other thought uh, I had was in looking at the freebie was that with freebie, with the idea of f people, fewer cars coming into town, well, the city would lose parking revenue. So I, you know, and I was trying to calculate how many cars would not come in and the city might lose like $50,000 or so in parking rent. So I think we have to look at that, like to do a service and because uh, that's, it would be a hidden cost. And then the other way of funding it, I thought, like with the, um, the idea of jitneys or rather than freebies, or if you want a freebie, it'd be great if the realty companies would sponsor those. Like imagine if Lingo's, offered that as part of their rental service for all the people renting their properties. If they had an on-demand jitney or one or two or freebie car and that they provided that, or maybe the realtors go together so that they can take their customers, pick them up at their rental places, take them to the beach, take them to dinner. And that might be a model that would work. That's a really interesting idea. That's not something I thought about at all, but I like that idea a lot. Oh. Well, I, I, I sort of thought like, well, hey, the realtors, they can afford a $50,000 jitney or vehicle service. Oh, yeah, and let me go back to the, the whole idea. I mean, there was such an unfortunate situation with the way it was put on my mixer. You know, I, I have to say that I, I had never really contemplated the city paying for this. I was looking at this from a point of view of grants and then for the pilot and then not necessarily being free in the future um, but but paid for by either someone like the realtors or the way they talked about it with freebie as they do car wraps as an advertisement that that you know pays for some of the the uh, the cost. But in any case, um, 
The only thing I have to, to say, you know, one thing that also attracted me with, with the idea of the ride freebie was a green solution. Having, you know, just more cars come in and just more exhaust and, you know, the whole idea of a green solution really did attract me. Um, somehow to me, it seems that we've got, um, we need some sort of a hybrid system. You know, something that is fixed route and maybe some on demand. Um, I, I really like the idea of a pilot of some sort that wouldn't be a cost to the city. Um, but I also, in talking with this VIA company, I have asked them to give us a proposal. They, they work with city cars all over the world and they understand the problem. So it'd be interesting to see what they have to say about you know, on demand versus fixed route. I, I know Uber and Lyft are great services, but it does, as you said, Susan, you know, bringing more cars into town, of course, that, you know, that, that's an issue. Traffic is an issue and, and parking is an issue. With Uber, you kind of get rid of the parking issue, but you still have the traffic issue. So, you know, it's, it's, it's um, a situation uh -huh. that I think that, you know, we can, should continue to explore because you know, the beach bus, the Del Dart and the Do um, Dart bus that comes in, I think are, they really have uh, actually gotten, they get more and more ridership every year. So that's a good thing. Um, but the, the other interesting thing that I, I see is our, our, what I call bedroom communities, North Shores, Henlope and Acres, um, Canal Corcoran, uh, Canal Landing, you know, all of those places out, right outside of town. What about them in Kings Creek, Rehoboth Yacht and Country Club? Those are, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people who, who are here and something like that could be, be of use to them. So yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad we're having this discussion. I really, I love the idea, Donna, that you just put forward um, of maybe that could be part of a pilot but, um, you know, if Good. there's more co comments from the committee right now, I, I'd like to go to the public guy. We have Gary Glass here today and Walter Brittingham. So, well, I, I just want to follow up, Pat, with the idea of like the bedroom communities. Like mm -hmm. if they would have their own jitney service. If, I, like I think of it down in Bethany, it seems like, uh, you know, there's a shuttle that runs from Sea Colony down to right. Bethany. Who, who pays for that? Or is that C, something Sea Colony provides? Or I, if, right, you know, yeah. but if those communities would provide it for themselves, it would be nice. And I would like to hear more about uh, VIA, you know, that's operating in Georgetown, I think. Yeah, so I'm expecting important. to get something from them by the end of the week. So, which is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens if, if, that, if that does. But let me go I'm ahead. Yes. And Pat, I was just going to say, I agree with you. I, I have friends that live in all those communities you were naming, and and a number of them won't come in their homes during the summertime. Yeah. So and it would really help the merchants so we could some find, find a way to get them into town. And you know, Pat, I think that folds into the idea of promoting the shuttle. Really, the, the best hidden secret in Rehoboth here is that there's not a parking problem in Rehoboth in the middle of the week. We need to promote that with those bedroom communities. Come into Rehoboth in the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, come for breakfast and shop and stay for lunch, you know. Uh, but we need to promote that and encourage all those people to come in during the middle of the week. It's not a problem. And so I could see doing an advertising thing, promoting that as well as promoting the shuttles for the weekend. Uh, but it, it's, uh, just posting that stuff on next door and and I because I have friends too that live in those areas and they they won't come into this in the summer at all right I, I say no come come in the middle of the week it's okay <laughs> so, okay um I, I will tell you that we do have an hour and a half for our meeting today but I don't want to spend forever on this topic so I do want to go to the public because I know both of these people wanted, I believe, to speak to this issue. So um, if we can do that, um, I'll go Walter Brittingham, or if you are, can you hear us? Walter, are you there? He's muted. He's muted, there he is. There he is. 
Alter has no comment. Okay. Um, Gary Glass, would you have comments on this topic? I do have a couple comments that I'd like to make. Okay. First, first of all, I think that the city, I know that you all are just focusing on the streets, but the city should take all of their expenditures, and I think they're going to have a lot coming up with improving the sidewalks and streets and the north side of Verhoeven should Clear Space Theater come in and also the remediation of the stormwater runoff throughout the city. And so I, I, I just don't see where the city has such deep pockets that they can subsidize so much, and especially for people living outside the city. So my next point was we should really focus on serving the rental homes and the residents and homeowners in, in our town and trying to figure out a way to get them to our business community easily. One of the things I've not seen the business community do to promote their business is to offer any kind of a valet parking service to help their customers, which would also move cars away from the center part of the business community to a external parking lot. I'd also like to suggest that for traffic, which is part of the streets committee's responsibility that we or that the committee thinks about changing some of the streets to one way. I think we're trying to do way too much on the streets. We could probably increase some of the parking on some of the streets. If we made them one way, we could create a bike path on the streets, which would make the bikes safer to operate on the streets. We have we're going to have, if clear space comes in, park, if people park on the north side, we're going to have pedestrian walking in streets, walking in Columbia Avenue and Henelovan Avenue to get to the theater. And somebody is going to get hit, and the car always wins. Um, it's not a good situation. So I think to accommodate all that we have going and traffic flow, I think that it might behoove us to take a look at one-way streets and bicycle paths on streets and, and making it safe for pedestrians walking on those streets. But um, I don't believe we should compete with Uber and Lyft. We already have these two services as well as we have taxi services that operate for profit. And here we are competing and, and trying to almost in a way put them out of business by offering a free subsidized service. You wanna subsidize, subsidize Lyft, subsidize, subsidize Uber subsidize trolley trolley and, and let them do more but keep the money in Rehoboth focus on serving the Rehoboth community I don't feel it's so important to bring all these people from outside Rehoboth into Rehoboth I know the business community would love the the dollars but um I think we have a lot to do to to just get our people to stay in town and eat at our restaurants a lot of the homeowners and visitors go out on Route 1 to eat, and we need to try to capture that. That would be a lot. That's what I have to say. Okay. Well, we'll come Pat, can I, can I comment on that? Because there are several topics here that we've addressed yeah. Yeah. in years yeah. past. We talked about one-way streets. We were tasked to work on one-way streets. We had recommendations that were being formulated on one-way streets. And unfortunately, that information got into the press before we even really had a chance to discuss it in a meeting. The pushback was horrific. The pushback was unbelievable. The pushback was worse than the recommendation for a pedestrian zone around the bandstand horseshoe. It, it, was, it was unbelievable to me how badly the local merchants reacted to the pedestrian zone and they reacted even worse to the thought of one-way streets. That's interesting. Um, we, had, we, had to completely, we had to completely drop it. Wow. So here's the thing. I think part of part of um, you know this this idea from my point of view, a hybrid system, whether or not we uh, end up with anything like ride freebie, or what we what we really need is some real expertise. And I've talked about this in commissioner meetings and, and before. We need a traffic management plan, I believe. Um, and I think that VIA can offer that. That's one of the things that they do is have a consulting group that can look at our city and um, determine uh, th things like one-way streets, um, you know, give us some, some advice on that. So I'm interested in, in, in continuing this discussion um, and I will be getting something from VIA and um, 
I think it's something that uh, I have asked them to give me a proposal for a traffic management plan and what that might entail. Um, I don't expect it to be that expensive and I'd like to, to bring it up at our budget meetings uh, as we move forward, the commissioners move forward. So um, this will probably you know, stay on our agenda till we you know, at least mm -hmm. come up with some idea that there are some ways that we're saying we're just gonna depend on Uber and, and Lyft and then not deal with anything else or you know, however we, whatever recommendations or, or decisions we make on our end to then recommend to the city that this is what we think we ought to do. So, um, you know. Yeah, here, here's another approach, idea to, as the, Gary was talking about bringing people in or, or serving the immediately people in town. We, like most of us, we like to bike, you know, like when I'm in town, I, I don't take my car into town. I'll either walk or I'll bike. But what I found is the bike racks are packed. Lots of people are biking. The bike racks are packed. We need more of those. Yes. And we need more space for bikers. And it just dawned on me. Like, how do we create more space for bikers? Maybe we, here's an, I don't, I think the city could actually raise the parking fee. I think with what happened this past summer or so, we can raise the parking fee. And if we do that, then we can get rid of some parking spaces. We could actually afford to let go of some parking spaces, which we're, you know, never do now, but let go of some parking spaces to create more room for bicyclists. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, that's another topic, but just I'll, I'll address that really quickly uh, in terms of, cre we, we've done that in, in the past. I mean, back when we had the bicycle pedestrian master plan, we converted some parking spaces into, by, into areas for bike parking and for scooter parking. And, um, you know, some of that had been taken away, but there's still a lot that exists for bicycles. Um, and I think we could look at that again in terms of perhaps doing a few more of those. But I do agree, we need more bicycle racks. We need, and that's a whole topic we're gonna talk about anyway, um, safe, you know, ways to get into the city via bike. So, yes, okay. Well, well, I, I think the city's strategy be, is to often, if we're worried about helping businesses, it's to extend our season. We can't bring more people in, <laughs> but it's packed in a lot of ways. We really need to look at extending the business season and, and, and do more with the shoulder seasons. That was what would help businesses. And again, advertising or something. I have a timing question, which is that um, it sounds like VIA, is VIA doing two separate proposals, one for consulting on this traffic management plan and the other for their shuttle service? Well, no, I've just asked them for the traffic management plan at this point. Um, they've got some, they, they, he described to me what they do in Georgetown mm -hmm. and we can talk about that some more um, next, next meeting because I don't want to, we've taken the half hour of time on this, but there's still things that we want to cover. And I think the thing that we, you know, a couple things, or the main thing that we'll end up talking a lot about, I believe, is um, the cr updates on crosswalk painting and the, the additional shear rows and that kind of thing. So we're gonna talk about that here in a moment. Right. So um, yeah, I, I'm I just wondered, so you envision then the, the proposal from uh, VIA coming up, at a commission, coming up at a budget meeting rather than coming back to this group next month? Well, I, you know, I don't think, I mean, I. I I would believe that everybody on this committee, maybe I'm making an assumption, but I would believe everybody on this committee thinks that a traffic management plan for the city would be a good idea. Well, is it, and I'm wondering, does it, will it include bicycle traffic or is it just car traffic or what? Well, no, I want it to include bicycle. I want okay. it to include every, all forms of transportation. Okay, great, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd have to. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, I'll get something back from him and then I, you know, I'll, I'll tweak it with him in terms of what we're looking for. But yeah. I, I believe that it, it, hopefully it would be well received and I'm expecting it to be a, a fortune. Okay, so, so then we would probably, we can't talk about it, I guess, at the budget meeting on Monday, but we would talk about it maybe at the one on the 19th. I would think so. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump next to the um, update on the positioning of silent policemen on State Road, and I believe that uh, Chief Banks, he is here, and he has, um, he can tell us a bit more about that. Hi, good morning. Um, 
everyone. Um, yes, the silent placement on State Road is uh, moving forward. I did have a meeting with um, City Manager Sharon Lynn and um, Kevin Williams, as well as Bill from the sign shop. Um, Bill did state that he um, had a couple of new ones, um, silent police officers um, down at the garage, and um, he could put those up on State Road and um, space them apart from the intersection. So that's probably going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Um, right now, I know Bill is busy um, ordering some things and off some um, additional signage uh, for around town and specifically down there, the, um, the new dock. And also that took priority, but um, in the next couple of weeks, that should go up. So um, city manager okayed that. Good. Thank you. Good to hear. Yes, I didn't follow that exactly. You're going to replace the existing silent policeman where on State Street and um, Munson? Yes, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Last uh, a few weeks ago, we spoke about out, um, relocating the silent police officer that um, Hickman Street because it was too close to the intersection. So when people were coming off Canal and Hickman making the turn, they were um, clipping it in some instances. Yep. So we're going to... Uh, make two of them before you get to the intersection to draw attention to that at one on each side and open up the um, center a little bit more so um, vehicles with trailers and all would not hit the sign. Perfect. Okay. So just adding two there at Hickman. Space Correct. Step. Correct. We have one there now and we'll add a second yeah. one and we'll kind of distance them more from the intersection a little bit to uh, slow the traffic up coming up to the intersection so people can cross. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I have a related question. And unfortunately, it's not about the silent policeman. So I'm not sure whether we can talk about it or not. But I was a little surprised not to see it on, on, on the agenda. I thought at a previous meeting, we had talked about the additional crosswalks that are further up uh, state at, you know, at Munson. Right? Yes, uh, Munson, um, Kevin Williams worked with Dell dot on, on that and that does look like a go I think it's for next year. And all, and there'll be um, signage and all that at to to go go there. So yes. Because the question I have is, how do you? There are no sidewalks on the um, across uh, State Road on that side. So how do you? I, I thought that that was one of the drawbacks to the, the crosswalks had to have um, a sidewalk to attach to or something like that. Uh, um, it does, and I'm not sure what they're doing. He's working with Dell Dodd and, and their engineers, so I guess whatever they're going to put in there, air, uh, will, obviously will meet code. And okay. so, so I don't know if state is deciding to add some sidewalks or not. Kevin would be better to talk about that, but I do know preliminary that they have been in meetings with Dell Dodd, and they're, they come up with a focus plan there, State Road in Munson. And I, I guess that's in our budget, right? So I can ask about that at the budget meeting. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. We, we do have the plan, I believe. What is it? A, the one for coming up at Canal. We had Kevin show that to us last time. Is that where it is? Yeah. Yes. It, it's Munson yeah. Street. Munson, so, yes, and, it was, Munson it, and Grove were across the state. Right. Mm -hmm. and I, I believe we were told in the past that there might be a way to work these things out without having to have the ADA ramps installed. There might be. So it sounds like that's what's going on. Well, yeah. I do know there's, there's a plan moving forward. I, I showed that last time. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So that's going to well, I mean, that, that's in the budget. There, that's in the budget right. for this year for, to move forward with that. So this is, it will this is really good because it's yeah. two intersections that have been a problem for years. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. I just, I just couldn't figure out how they were going to do it. I, I didn't know if we were going to well, talk. Remember, remember last meeting, didn't someone say down on North Shores uh, in that area that they already have crosswalks that don't have a sidewalk on both sides? So they've already figured out how to get they around. Put in, they put in uh, ADA ramps on both sides that lead to the grass. <laughs> okay, so maybe, okay. But there are ADA <laughs> ramps there, so it, it complies with the federal requirement. Maybe that's. Not ideal, but it's a way of getting around it, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. But that's uh, progress on and stage. That's, that's good because because Ocean now has crosswalks all the way along. It's really good. Right. Very safe. No, I, I agree. I agree. Which brings us to our our, our next topic. I I, I know that um, 
There were, I mean, and Chief, you may know where this stands. We've been talking about it for a while. And I know it was funded and I know things have been ordered, but the um, poles and the signs and the lights for crosswalks mid um, where it's not at an intersection, that should be going up sometime soon. I don't, do you know where that's, when that is gonna happen now? Again, I hate to just say in the next few weeks or so, but just it's going to be weather dependent. All the parts are in, so they do have to put uh, pour some concrete and all that at that um, for, for the poles to go in post and all. But uh, all the parts are in it and ready to get. Oh, and that will be at Third Street, Fourth there, and um, at Fifth. Okay. And all the crosswalks, and it'd be the um, push button signals. So when people want to cross, so I think it will add to the safety. And I think I'm um, not to mix the topics, but I think that will at the same time, um, we probably should just wait for that to be installed to address anything further at, at our crosswalks at those intersections and see how they make out because they'll have the big um, crosswalk signs and all that attached with them. Okay, okay, good. That sounds good. Um, so shall we start talking about the Sharrows? I mean, that's one of the things that we've been talking about in terms of um, trying to increase the safety on the Rehoboth Avenue uh, on, on many of our streets. Uh, the other thing was um, signage to help bicyclists as they go into town. So we can address both of those today, I think. I've been advised that all of the sharrows that we have currently um, can be re will be refreshed. Uh, so that, that's good. We'll be refreshed this year. But we have been told that we can put additional sharrows down. No issue with that. It's a matter of placement. And um, I came up with, a, and I can probably share this map with you, I think. Um, yes, I think I have control of this. Let me see. It'll be, oh, here it is. Okay, um, it's not a great map. The, the roads don't really show up per se. Um, I struggled with this one a bit, but I will tell you what should be pretty evident to you um, are, are the blue dots. Uh, what, what the Public Works has asked us is they want very specific, you know, where do you want these sharrows placed? So, you know, perhaps this map isn't the most ideal, but I wanted this up for discussion to talk about it. And basically what I've done here, just in terms of the avenue is, um, can you see my, the hand? My, the yeah. yes. oh, okay, good. So this is the one, as soon as you get across the, the canal, there's, there's a share So it becomes very mm -hmm. evident that you're gonna have to share. And then what I did next, and I know this is, you can't tell necessarily, but some are on one side of the road and some on the other side. So what I wanted to do was essentially across streets. So for an example, at Grove Street, when you're gonna make that, that right, um, and that's around, that's the circle right there, that there's another share right beyond the circle. So if you're coming off the circle or you're making a right onto the avenue, there's a share there. So essentially what these, all these dots are is um, mostly right after the street intersection, there's a share. So if you're making a ride onto the avenue, the first thing you're gonna see is a share. So that's, that's how I positioned these all down here. Um, so right after uh, Bayard, right after second, right after first, then you can go around the loop and, and Likewise, on the other side. So, um, I'd, I'd welcome comments about first, you know, these ideas about the sharrows on the avenue and where they might be, and if you have other uh, input in terms of something different. So, so technically, they're called sh shared lane marking (SLM) in the mm -hmm. trade, and Bruce mentioned the MUTCD which is the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. So there are actually fairly good numbers available to us to tell people where to put these and how far apart they should be. And the one thing that disturbed me when I was doing this research was they absolutely don't want bike lanes around traffic circles. 
which is, of course, our, our biggest problem, getting people up and down Rehoboth Avenue. So we can share, once people cross the bridge, plan A, of course, is to get people to turn right onto Canal Street. And ideally, we would have a bike route sign with an arrow to the right there. So people go down, and, and a lot of people do. All, yeah. all of the, what I would call, confident cyclists, veteran cyclists, experienced mm -hmm. cyclists, yeah. they don't even think about going up Roboth Avenue, but the people that we need to protect are the ones that are gonna go up Roboth Avenue. So the recommend, I, I looked at every site I could find that spoke in English. So generally they were UK, Canada, the United States. They like the Sharrows to begin 10 meters before the sharing of the lane and then exist no more than 100 meters apart depending on the road and the, and the traffic volume. And they don't like Sharrows on any road that has a speed limit over 35 miles an hour, which we're good on because everything there is 25. So the spacing looks good to me and we, it's, it's just something we have to do. The only, the only caveat is that you put it in the center of the travel lane so that the tires don't wear the paint off. And I, I'm assuming here where you put the sharrows would always be in the right lane, just in the yes. just sharing the right lane on both in both directions. Right. Yes, there's there's ample width on Rehoboth Avenue up to Second Street to put painted bike lanes in, but it's not our street. Well, I mean, you say ample. In, in terms of the, the statistic, in terms of the measurements, the, the width requirement is met, but is it the right thing to do? Well, my, my issue would be, you're, you're, I, it seems like you would be taking a lane of traffic away for a, for a bike lane. You could still have, with, with the measurements that Bruce conducted from the bridge to Second Street, there's enough width to have the proper width travel lanes and a bike lane all three, two cars plus a bicycle. Really? And that's because there's parallel parking there, is that right? Yes, you get into, you get into issues. Once you get beyond Second Street, it's too narrow. <laughs> well, then again, if we put a bike lane on Rehoboth Avenue, then we're promoting bikes to be on that street. And, exactly. And you're right that, um, I, and I think that this is not gonna be a difficult thing to do and I will um, address it at the, the next, our next budget meeting because for some signage um, and specifically we need the signage that um, was provided by the, the vendor who did the wayfinding. Um, I went around town and took some the pictures of um, the bicycle wayfinding if you will um, the other day and uh, you know there's no problem. I, I don't see a problem with uh, you know having an arrow to turn on Grove Street saying, you know, this is the beach, and then you're going to need additional ones to get someone down the preferred um, streets for, for, for getting to the beach, so. Okay. It would also help us keep the bicycles off the sidewalk, which is becoming more and more of a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, that might be something that, I, you know, Chief, don't we have, we do have a few, um, that by, by signs saying bicycles aren't allowed, don't we, on sidewalks? Um, yes, the stenciling that Evan had done a few years ago, they probably need to be refreshed. Some of them are holding up well and some of them are fading pretty badly. Okay. It, it's again, just um, that's the only place or signage. A lot of people just don't know the rules. And the, the reality is, um, we're kind of unique where we don't want to want a sidewalk um, where there's not a designated bike lane. And um, a lot of times uh, people get towed out on the highway to do that because they don't want to, you know, in the highway and things. So uh, when they continue in town, they kind of get confused. And of course, the topic that you've already discussed in the past, when you're promoting to get closer to the sidewalk, when you're getting up um, to crossing our bridge coming into town. So the, then they, the state yeah. allows bicycles on the sidewalk correct so it's it's a city issue not a not a oh. state issue correct so as soon as you cross the canal the rules change as soon as you cross silver lake the rules change and that's where it becomes confusing for people correct especially yeah. 
for especially our foreign students and yes. uh, and there's no signage except that on a sidewalk um, I, so, I sent um, Pat two signs yesterday that, that I thought would be helpful particularly on <clears throat> Hoboth Avenue at the at the museum in egg um, so just to kind of uh, let's talk a little bit about the this the bike by possible bike lane on Rehoboth Avenue, a possible sharrows on Rehoboth Avenue. Um, what, what's the overall feeling? Um, we, we basically don't really want people on Rehoboth Avenue, but they're gonna be on there. So what do we wanna do about that? I think that the sharrows are gonna be the path of least resistance in terms of getting something done. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we, have to work, we have to work with the state to accomplish either objective. Um, I believe, Chief, don't, as far as sheriffs, we have, um, we can go ahead and move forward with doing that on the avenue without the permission of the state. Isn't that right? Yeah, we would include them, I, I'm sure, or um, Kevin and, and Bill and the city manager and all would work with, with the state this time we're doing it, but they haven't resisted that in the past as long as we're willing to take over the maintenance of that. And all, I think you get into the putting a bike lane and all, you're going to have to bring that up to the mayor and commissioners as a whole body to sit there and um, decide if that's what they want done. Because I think that is moving the center striping and all that over. It's a lot, a lot of, a lot of work involved in that. And, and to look well, up and all that. So yes. Well, in a way, I don't know if we really need that bike lane on Rehoboth Avenue because number one, we don't want to encourage bike bikers to go that way. If people aren't familiar. I think those who are, typically go down Rehoboth Avenue, you automatically uh, stay to the right, you know, where you have a chance. I, I don't, and, and share the lane. So I, I don't know that it's really critical to put a bike lane there on Rehoboth Avenue. Um, it sounds to me like sharers are the way to go because we can, yeah. we can accomplish it quickly and efficiently and inexpensively. Other comments from committee members? I would agree with what the others have said here. Yeah. And then and then once we do that, then Bayard would be the next one. Okay, well, I mean, this is this is our opportunity to move forward with with, you know, putting Sharrows wherever we think we need them and we don't need to wait till next year for Bayard, you know, for Bayard. We just can um, propose where we want them and uh, the chief and Kevin and city manager will work with Del Dodd to make sure that they're okay with some of these, especially if they're on the state road. So um, <clears throat> I had asked David and, and Bruce to, to, you know, their their thoughts on this, and that this, as you know, is my diagram is not not great here. But um, do we? My concept of of where these should go. Does this make sense to everybody? Is this the yes? Way we move forward? Yeah. And, yes. And yeah, and I have I have no trouble getting specifics to Kevin. I I got the dimensions of the Silver Lake Bridge from him the day before yesterday. Okay. Uh -huh. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, then perhaps you know if if you want to do that and just send them all, um, um email all of us and um, then we can look at that and and we can move forward hopefully with those. So. What's been proposed for Rehoboth Avenue, I guess it sounds like we have a consensus of that's a good way to move. Um, other streets, Byard, I guess, is another one that's, you know, heavily trafficked. And I guess um, State Road would probably be the, the other one as well. Is, is, am I right on that? Or what's everyone's thoughts on that one? State mm -hmm. could have a bike lane on the west side of the street if we were so inclined, because there's not a parking stripe on that side. There's a parking stripe on the east side of State Road, but not on the west side. The east side of State Road has a, has a parking, parking space stripe and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. The west side of State Road, there are no sidewalks, no parking stripe. Mm -hmm. So conceivably, we could be proactive and put a bike lane down the west side of State Road from Rehoboth Avenue all the way out of town. 
-hmm. Well, you know, David, the problem there, it, number one, State Street's not all that busy, but also if people going, uh, like you say, west on State Street, that dead end when you get down to, uh, at, at the school, you can't keep going west. You just go right down state and curve around under the bridge and you end up and headed toward Dewey. Right, but, but the traffic pattern is, you've got cars coming at you at that point. Cars and bikes can't, can't keep going south there. Well, at a certain point we're outside the city limits, so it's out of our realm anyway. <laughs> But if you want to, if you take State Street toward Dewey, you end up going against the traffic. You know, you you you, uh, you, you either have to take the turn to go up the, over the bridge and go north on Route One. As far as going south on One, you're in a position where you're going against traffic and you have to cross Route One somewhere. I, I I don't. When I ride my bicycle there, I don't find myself in a problem at all. Yeah. What do you do? What What do you do when I you get? I just go right around the curve. I go under the bridge, around the curve, turn left, and come up with a drug treatment facility, and then turn right and head head south on Route One. It's really simple. Yeah. Oh, you go under the bridge yeah. there. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I'm. It's I'm safer like now. Just... It's safer now to turn left, and go up and take the ramp and go across the across the canal bridge, to head north on Route One. It's safer now than it used to be. It's actually fairly uh -huh. well protected. But I, that's just not a not a way I go to any place. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I, I take a bike it, it, toward the school, and when you get to the school, there you can't keep going south. Uh, but I see what you you right. got to. You have to go. The, you have to go to Route One South. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. not. I'm not turning left. I'm continuing on. Right. Straight ahead. Oh, okay. So that's, that's that side the of state. Bike lane would go. You, you take the bike lane that way. Okay. Yeah, that all the way, sense. all the way from Rehoboth Avenue under the bridge. Under the bridge. To, okay. And okay. I think the city. I think the city limits end just before the bridge. Chief right. Banks so may know better to, than I, but so the I think state that's have where to it be is. Involved in the in the re, in in making it continuous. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That, yeah, that would be helpful. Well, so. <clears throat> I think but we as, ought to. I was just going to say, as, as, as streets go, that's a lot less traveled on bicycles than the others we've been talking about. Right. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. So I, I kind of, you know, I kind of feel like we want to be successful first with the Sharrows before yes. we start talking about a bike lane on State Road. Yes. Um, that's, down, that's down the list. Yeah, we've got we've got First Street, which is very tight, cumbersome, awkward, not pleasant for cyclists. Right. Is it Bayard or Bayard? I'm I'm learning the pronunciation. <laughs> is it like Stockley or Stokely? Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I think either is acceptable. I'm right. the same way, David. <laughs> so whatever we call it, that's a street that needs help with Sharrows. And the same with, with as King Charles narrows and becomes first, all the way up across the bridge toward the Henlopen Hotel. That's another one that's pretty tight and not comfortable. So, David, um, you know, I, I really wanted, you know, you, you and Bruce to get together on these, and I'm, I'm hoping that you will be uh, amenable to taking this task on. We're, we're happy to lay it out because it's, it, it accomplishes an objective that's, that's important to us. Okay, well, if you'll do that, um, we'll have time to, to make that a priority one for next meeting to, um, uh, you know, make that recommendation of where we want them and then, then we can move forward with giving those, that information to um, the team. Yeah. Well, in, in keeping with this, also, and go, going back to signage, that uh bike signage i think is it would be next and is important to coordinate perhaps with sharrows but the thing to keep in mind with the bike signage you know the merge project they did not do any bike signs yeah. they did they, they, they bothered they there's didn't bother those little bikes. pardon me there's five of them five bikes well <laughs> they did very few but what they were saying that they, they were too minor to bother with 
So there's a there is a a lack of signage for bikes. Well, yeah, no, I agree. We need more. I'm just saying they did do some, but we definitely right. do need more. They're very minor, but but uh, the idea all along, I'm just trying to point out, the idea all along was they weren't going to address all our concerns for bike signage. They they left that undone with with the idea that we would go back and and pick out what signs we need and, and give it to our own sign shop, I guess. So, the, but the I just signs, the signs are readily available on the internet. Some of them I could copy and paste. Some of them I had to take photographs of. I think the most expensive sign I found was sixty dollars. Well, so I, I just think a signage plan too. Like after I like the idea of Dave and, and Bruce working on getting the sharrows, and then next if they would also work on <laughs> on signs that we need around town for bicyclists. Um, yes, I started I started this week with signs at the Canal Bridge and signs for the Silver Lake Bridge. Good. So I, I researched those two sets of signs. Well, right. here's the thing, David. We, we, one of the things that's important, and as commissioners, and Susan, correct me if I'm wrong, um, we talked, when we approved this merge project, the whole intent was to try to have a wayfinding system that was um, cohesive, and um, we want to continue with that. So the signs, and I, I, I do have... Um, I'm sure you've all seen them. If you haven't, I can share them with you. Um, there are signs, for example, coming at Henlopen and uh, Surf Avenue. There are at least two signs there pointing in the direction of the bike path, et cetera, to downtown. Um, there are other signs on the other um, and basically coming off of the bike path on Grove Street, there's a sign. So there's some signs around and those are the types of signs I believe from a wayfinding viewpoint that we want to use to be consistent and cohesive uh, mm -hmm. have that plan. Um, does that seem like a reasonable assumption to make? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the, signs, the signs that I suggested this, this week were, were not wayfinding signs. They were um, informational warning signs under the, to help with the shared lanes and not on the sidewalks. Okay. But way, wayfinding should, should be cohesive with merge in terms of the look, style, feel, et cetera. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Right, right, right. I believe we do own the design of those. Mm -hmm. so um, yes, yeah, so we better like blue and orange. Yeah, right. uh, it was supposed to be aqua and coral. I don't know how it was to blue and orange. Really, really. Yeah, well, we got what we got. Now. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, okay, well, good. So next meeting, David, um, I, I will look forward to, to seeing some specifics on this that we can then um, send on to. Uh, to public work to really get these things done. Yeah, I can get Bruce out with his tape measure and we can figure it all out. Perfect, perfect. Okay, good. Great, um, thanks. So let me, let me go to the public because uh, they may have comments on this. I don't know if they do. Here, I'll stop sharing this thing. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Um, Walter Brittingham, do you have any comments that you'd like to make? How about going to the others first? And if you're getting ready to finish, let me be last, please. Okay. Uh, Gary? Gary, are you there? I, I'm, I think I'm competing with the moderator to unmute myself. Sorry. I um, Can you hear me? I yeah. can hear you. It shows that you're muted, but I can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. I think we're good. Okay, so I just have two comments. One is that I think the Sharos are excellent and the more the better. I ride bikes a lot. I did last summer. I'm gonna do it again this summer. It's very competitive with the cars to, to ride on the streets, on any street almost. The second thing I would have to say is that I think that at some point there could be a problem, and this was kind of for the chief, there could be a problem with these large trucks that park in these diagonal parking spaces on Rehoboth Avenue. I've had to stop and wait till I could go around them because they stick so far out in the road. And with the Sharos on the same 
pathway as these trucks that are sticking out of these parking spaces, it could just help to slow down that right lane even a little bit more. But I don't know what the rule is on these large trucks blocking up the roads, but on bicycle and with the car, I've, I've had that issue and I think we're gonna have it more down the road. That's all. No, thank you for that, Gary. If I may just comment on vehicles that, st um, that are too far out in a travel lane, lane and there are more and more uh, people seem to like their big trucks. I go, um, the officers, if they go by and have to kind of move over and cross the line, then we'll stop and give a, a citation and the parking division at the same time give citation for oversized. And, all. and again, we just sit there and observe if we see vehicles having to move all the way over to the right. Now, some just do it naturally and they really don't have to, but if we see that you can't get around without having to really move over towards the center line, um, then we'll go ahead and give a citation. Okay, thank you. Um, Walter, comments? Thank you. Um, first of all, um, the traffic management study that you discussed earlier, uh, we talked about it last year. At some point in time, if you're going to do a traffic management study, you need to find the time of year to do it, and that's really summer. So that means you have to enable it with money ahead of time and not talk about it in the fall. Um, it needs to be better. Uh, first of all, David, thank you for extensive conversation about sheriffs and the, how they're supposed to work. Um, coming in across Rehoboth Avenue under the new state uh, little route there, but as you've said, when you get to Rehoboth's jurisdiction, there is no signage that says stop, you must be off the sidewalk, and they go right on around the sidewalk all the way around to uh, the farmer's market area. While we're on the subject, for the past five years, we've had no signs at Silver Lake Drive out at Silver Lake Bridge. I don't know what the city has against that, but what happens is typically in a lot of these meetings, it stops here and it doesn't go any further. Um, by the way, it is, it, the proper name is State Road. And before you go talking about doing stuff on the non-sidewalk non side of State Road, that being the north side, and or the crosswalk, there's gonna be some sidewalk discussion or there should. So before you get ready to mark a line and a bike path, if, if it was approved by everybody that had to approve it, there needs to be a sidewalk discussion. Um, as far as the sheriffs, the first sheriffs just showed up, never went to the commissioners, but I, Pat, you, you fell off in the end. We didn't hear you, I didn't hear you. But um, when the sheriffs are finally discussed, it needs to go back to the commission. So it is open to public comment and for a period of time so the public can come back and, and speak. Um, and just, uh, I'll do some citizen comment at the end. Um, it, some of these things disappear from the agenda and don't come back. Uh, we don't have anything here from the city manager of what's being proposed to happen before summer. And that would be nice to know so that the commissioners might even know. But there is no enforcement about bicycles on Silver Lake Drive at the south end with you turn around the corner and you have bikes in front of you. I've never seen a bicyclist stopped. Um, I don't know that they get tickets. Um, they are bicycles or cars. And when the signs up there, it says one way do not enter. That should mean bikes also, and they should be given tickets. And I have heard in the past that if you're gonna put a sign up there that says applies to bike also, you have to do it around the city. But I think if you start enforcing it and give some tickets, real tickets, you call them citations. I challenge, I'm gonna change subjects now. I challenge you, I, I wanna see you go up to Rhonda when her truck's parked into one of the unloading zones. And so what's the difference there when she backs into the unloading zone or FedEx when they park all the time out in the street, they just don't give a damn, they must get a college course on it. There needs to be some rationale. And I'll end with this, because when the, they don't park close enough to the cars, and even at the post office, when you're going westbound, you'll look to your right, where you're gonna make a right-hand turn or just watch what's happening. And you have a bike coming down to the right of the two lanes of cars, and it needs to be fixed, it needs to be enforced. 
and bicycles should have lights on them or take the damn bicycles off the roadway. That means the people too. I know that's cruel, but let, let one of them get hurt. But all the stuff you do, um, we surely should follow the agenda all the way down to be sure everything's discussed and maybe ask ahead of time if anything's missing from the agenda that should have been there from old business. I thank you for the opportunity to speak. I think the stuff that you want to do, you need to be doing a couple months ago because it's coming on summer. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Okay. Um, I think at this point, let's see, I think we, we is the only other thing on this topic, let's see, it's 1110. Um, the crosswalk painting, uh, I know there was some interest last time about what, what's on Route 1 and how successful that's been about um, not worrying about it fading away, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, where we are on that one, I, I think that it would require the, the city to get more information about that. And we also would have to have the commissioners really understand and make the decision essentially, uh, since it's, it would cost some, I think some, some significant money to change out what we have on the avenue to something like that. So I don't think we're in a situation this, I mean, right now to, to be able to do that. I think what we really need to do is to make sure that there's going to be time. And I think there is, a, the plan is to refresh that, um, uh, I guess it's heat. What is, what, what is this, Chief, what is that? Um, is this some sort of heat? They, they, yeah, they call it a thermal paint. I'm sure there's a more specific name, but it is yeah. uh, heat treated. Um, I know Mr. Brenningham's aware of it, but um, basically it's a thermal paint. So thermal paint on all the crosswalks on the avenue and just basically refresh the crosswalks that we have currently. So the only other thing I would say, are there other crosswalks that we're missing, we've talked about some, and there are some issues and future conversations to have about those with the state in terms of um, ADA, those kinds of issues. We haven't talked about, and I don't think we have time today because it's a bigger, it's it's a bigger um, conversation. Is is what we can do on um, King Charles. So that's, that's something that we do need to talk about. And, and Walter, just to address what you said last time you were telling me that we had problems, we had too much on the agenda. So <laughs> it's not been forgotten. We just can't, we just can't cover everything in, the, in now the 90 minutes that we have. So that those things are not forgotten, they will come back. Um, but uh, we just, the initial piece of that where we had all of those, I just wanted to, um, recognize that they all came from, you know, last year, and that they were all things that needed to be at least addressed and prioritized. And I'm, that's what I tried to do this time with 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 uh, the um, agenda that we have. So anyway, um, Carl, any other conversation or co comments about crosswalks from anyone? If if not. Uh, there's one more topic on our agenda that we can talk about. Um, and again, this is the floor ideas for the bike share program at Grove Park. I think last time oh. we talked about this, people thought that it was for a bike share program. That was really the best place to have because we have plenty of bicycle rental companies in town and we didn't want to step on their toes. But the thoughts of people coming off of the water taxi or kayaks or whatever at the dock, that perhaps this would be a good solution. So I'd like to hear some more about what people think about that. We briefly brought it up. In, in the past, Pat, we talked about a bike corral back by the restrooms that would serve when we have the market. And also as there is a wayfind, there's a very large wayfinding sign back there now as well. So that was identified as a good spot for bicycles. I'm not sure it would be visible to people coming off of the, the water taxi, hopefully well, the water separate. taxi, but, but uh, there, there is some space behind the museum there that's currently filled with river rock that, that has some potential. 
uh, next to the, the, the Main Street building and the power transformers. There's also some space in the corner of the park that right now is just trash and recycling that has some potential. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, I, I'm still concerned about competing with our local bike shops. I think it, it has to be offered to the, to the, cycle, the cycle shops first. Yeah, yes. As I mentioned at the last meeting, that was, that's the firm that's been doing the one the Cape May Lewis Ferry Terminal. And I, I have a feeling with the groups that we have that are operating rental now, they'd be happy to be involved. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I only see a uh, bike rental uh, station there if it's run by a local company. I, I, the concern I have about some of the existing bike shares, the cities that have those, they find that, that people just abandon their bikes all around town. Yeah, it's called dumping, Donna. That's it's in the trade. I, I learned that this week too, it's called dumping. There's right, a lot of and dumping we, of scooters and a lot of dumping of bicycles, and it just becomes trash. Yeah. Right, right. There's no, and so I, we really need someone, I think, managing it locally who could coordinate it with other bike rental services. So I, I, I have would, to reach out, reach out to the local firms and, and gauge their interest and go from there. Yeah. I think that'd be good. Other thoughts? I, I would suggest, and uh, not step on anybody's toes, but I would um, say if the committee feels like that's the way, what needs to be pursued, then uh, Pat, maybe you can bring that back up to a mayor commissioner's meeting and uh, see how they want to formalize it. Because just like with the canal dock, I think um, they're in the process of thinking of ways, what are we going to do about kayaks and all, and there might be a um, bid to go out for mm -hmm. that, I know uh, maybe back by where the river rocks are and have a concession there or something in the future. So um, I would say the bike in that boat could be the same way. And obviously um, locals then could put the, their bid in if, if that's the way, way it got chosen, and, um, you know, and, and see how that works. And then um, I think needs all be on the same page. I think there's a, a, other committees and things are doing things uh, down in that area. So I, that'd just be my suggestion that it gets brought back at a meeting if this committee decides that's what they want to move forward with. And then you bring it up at, to the mayor commissioners to decide how the city manager should implement that. Okay, that's good advice. Yep. Other comments from the committee members? While we're on that, that little part of town with the, the museum district or whatever we're gonna end up calling it, there, we've had discussions in the past about making that a walk your bike zone once the dock comes into full use, people coming up the ramps, people bicycles coming off of the bike lane on Rehoboth Avenue, pedestrians on the sidewalk. That's gonna be a pretty crowded little, little area right there. Yeah, and if I may, again, I think those are topics will be brought up probably at a uh, workshop up at, with the mayor and commissioners because I know um, they are looking at, it might be February 8th uh, workshop that um, the city is proposing parks and recreation um, ordinance and updates to that because with the canal and um, that may be areas, you, you know, need to add that comment in with the policies and procedures that they're working on. Yeah, so there's a going to be, correct me if I'm wrong um, from the commissioners here, but I think you have a workshop February 8th. Yes. Just that. Yeah, yes. and there's actually, as of this morning, there's a support document to okay. that, with that, yeah. yeah. I haven't read it, I just saw it was there. Yeah. So that okay. might be a good time to add that, yeah. any comments on that. Okay, well, thank you. Well, we thank you. That. It would mm -hmm. be okay. Um, if there's no other comments by committee members, I'll go back to the public. Um, Walter Brigham, do you have any comments? Nothing, thank you. Okay, Gary. Like he's been muted. Gary, he's muted. Looks like it. I'm, I'm trying, there I go. Okay, I got it. I'm good. I think all these comments are good. I think a, a bike rental by a, a local company before we go to an outside company at the park, encouraging people to come and enjoy Rehoboth is great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, so I think that completes our agenda for today. Um, next uh, meeting, uh, David's going to bring to us um, the areas where the sharrows should be specifically, and we'll look at that so we can move forward. As well as, um, you know, signage, um, there are some suggestions that he will have, and other others, if you um, Feel free to come back with your ideas as well if there's for signage in particular. Um, <clears throat> so that would be that for next meeting. Um, the silent policeman board has been taken care of. Did we talk about the bike box? Yeah, I was just going to ask about that. <laughs> yes, we can. Um, yes, let's let's talk about the bike box. Yeah. Yeah. We have so I, I sent you a photograph of one that's protected by planters. Uh, one of the things that I've, I've, again, learning a lot is that in, in some jurisdictions, particularly where they have an organization like um, Rehoboth and Bloom or Lewis and Bloom, they use planters to separate the bike lanes from the traffic lanes, where there's ample width to give the, the cyclists a little more protection. And the area that we identified a year ago that was of concern to us was with the Lake Avenue streetscape moving to phase two, where the intersections being squared off, Olive, Maryland, Third Street and Lake, there's ample width there to put a bike box in for the cyclists that are heading west, because the city knows that's a, that's a problematic intersection with bicycles. It's kind of a free for all. It's too wide, the distances are too far. So that was one place that I thought we could, we could put our first one in place and get people used to it, where there's construction that's on the horizon, there's gonna be a median, let's use this as a place to put our first example of what can be done to make it safer for people on bicycles. Um, interesting idea. I think um, hopefully next time we'll have, we can have Kevin Williams here with us, given that Current, I mean, there's current construction there now. Whether or not that's something that can be added in, I have no idea. But uh, I, I look there's an update on that topic as well, I believe, at our workshop on Tuesday. I'm just going to look for it. I, I think we're, um, hold on. Um, yeah, update on the, yes, it's the very last thing on there, update on the Lake Avenue streetscape. So I don't know if it's something we want to bring up then. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it would be nice to, to talk about it before concrete gets poured and makes the sidewalk closer to the median than it, than it is right now. Well, David, I, I, the way it's laid out now with the curbing and, and what they're doing there on the Lake Street extension, I can't imagine there's enough space for a bike box at the intersections. I, it only, I, you only need three feet and there's a ton of space there, but it's basically the curve's been pushed out. Yes, the bike box they could narrowed be. it. They, they've narrowed it so much. I mean, I'm concerned that it's so narrow that you couldn't even have a, if a, a bicyclist and a bike couldn't even pass each other in, in the space that's available. It's, it's making it unnecessarily tight where there's an opportunity to do it a better way. Uh, Excuse me, I'm not sure if um, anybody else got the text, but um, Pat Clusey just texted and said she lost power. So she's. Oh. <laughs> I guess the meeting's nice. over. <laughs> What's yeah. happening over there? <laughs> okay, so I yes, guess we have to have a. I guess um, if um, one of you guys may, I don't know if want to close it out or not. It looks like. Yeah, let's just, let's just, let's just have a motion to adjourn and, and. Did we, did we schedule our next meeting for two weeks from now at 10 o'clock? No, we, no we should. would it be two weeks? Is that what we've been doing? Yeah, we've, yes. been, we've been trying to get two weeks to get caught up because we lost so much time. Right, right. But I don't know if we can do that without her here or not. But, so that would be the 18th if we end up doing yeah, that? Yeah, let's, let's tentatively schedule the 18th Okay. at 10 a.m. for 90 minutes. Okay. And then if, if that's just tentative, but yeah. at least we can get it all on our calendars. Yeah. So, and, and David, will you be in touch with Pat and tell her we did that and ask her? Yeah, I just I just sent her an email to let her know that uh, I'm going to dig up the one way street recommendations because I was a strong believer that that would be something that would really help the city, help the merchants, etc. 
but and you know, sometimes it it's hard to save people from themselves. You said it was the merchants who, who were the strong objectors? Yeah. More so and, than- and, 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 and the misconceptions were, were amplified by the fact that it got into the press yep. before we even I really had a chance up. to discuss it. Yeah, I so there, there was a restaurateur on Wilmington who said, well, how, if it's a one-way street, how can anybody get to my restaurant? Mm -hmm. Which <laughs> it, in the beach block, it could be one way. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> or you could never leave. <laughs> we, we learned we learned about backing into parking spaces that that's technically a violation because you're moving against traffic uh, is strange stuff but anyway um we we had a good plan for one-way streets and it got parked immediately so let's tentatively schedule two weeks 10 a.m to 11 30 a.m on thursday february 18th and now we just need a motion to adjourn Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Okay, John, thank you. Yeah.